I was just hoping that that God would give me time with her, that, that she will be there when I show her the world, that she will that, that she doesn't she will not die in poverty. Where did you get the resources to do a four story, you know, school? I am a software engineer. Yes. <laughs> I worked remotely from Ogotio for a company in America and I was getting paid a million a month. Oh, give me a hug. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Congratulations. The point of the story yeah. is that these jobs are there. That is the point of the story. The jobs are there that even from Ogotio you can do this job. That Basically. is what we are teaching our kids. At only grade 5, Bowen, a pupil at a rural school in Mogotio, Kenya, already has a website, a TikTok account. I can do index page, and I can a tag, and link. And can send emails, and now teaches his fellow kids about website development. Bowen, who aspires to be a software engineer, is just one of over 300 kids studying at Zawadia to primary school, built by the CNN Hero of the Year award recipient, Nelly Cheboy. Nelly's dream is to see thousands of youths working remotely for multinational companies around the world. Hello and welcome to Globe Traction. My name is Pasil Telewa. In our previous episode, we shared the backstory of Nelly Chaboy and how her mother inspired what she is today. In this particular episode, we find out all about what she does with TechLit Africa. Enjoy. I don't know why Emily Chumba song by Philip Yagon is still one of my all-time favorites. But damn, we just couldn't resist the dance. Nelly can really dance, don't you agree? Anyway, back to what brought us here. In our previous episode, we looked at the life of the CNN Hero of the Year Award winner Nelly Chaboy growing up in this dusty rural town of Mogotio. You could build a company in a night. That's how talented Tyler is. But just left all that to come and join me in Mogotio. We also brought you an interesting perspective by her mother, Christine Cheboy. Mokutana na Tyler. Tyler, ako? Eh, unaona za hiyo choice ya... Nelly? Ya, ya kosi. Eh, shushuguliki? Sini yake? Eh. Yoni yake? Eh. Unajua joshi ya mutu, uwesi, uwesi komen sana. Mm-mm-mm. Respect. In today's episode, we look at her brick and mortar projects in the heart of this rural village that is aimed at transforming Mogotio into a Silicon Valley-like tech hub. On arrival, Nelly takes us on a tour of her pet project, Zawadier to School. So this right here is the ground floor. Yes. So the ground floor is the school. So we have about 300 students attending mm -hmm. here. We are up to grade 6. Grade 6. Construction going, on. going on, yes, I can see the, the <laughs> men at work. Yeah. Construction is clearly underway, at least for some parts. Other activities too are taking place. Workers are busy giving some final touches on this three-story building that's her signature project on this piece of land. And oh, when she thinks that her warehouse is right up, I don't mind going to the construction site to take a look. Shall we put on our boots or something? I think you'll be fine. <laughs> Do you think I'll be fine? No, uh, when I'm with you, everything is okay. <laughs> Sounds good, okay. Just come on here. Okay. 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 okay, great. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this, girl. <laughs> oh my God. Be careful, though. Okay, okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What is in your backpack? I hope it doesn't no, spoil or something. Like oh my gosh, look at us! <laughs> <laughs> we wanna make it our tech center. Mm -hmm. in that we will press. And I'm gonna show you our warehouse. So this is, this is our headquarters actually. You're showing me where everything is. I hope we are safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right here. I'll show you this one. Great. Uh, 
so schools resumed as usual. It is even Wednesday, so we're just like coming back. Do you, do you have any any class yet that is sitting the national exams this year? No, no, no. So this is where, oh, sixth grade, yeah. So sixth right now, grade six. Yeah. We started this school in 2016. Yes. So right now we're up to grade six. Nice. I hope it does. I know. Is it is it for that padlock? Yeah, I should be. Oh yeah. Looks like that. Yes. Perfect. Oh, thank you. You can open this for more lighting. I like what I'm seeing already. Yeah. Wow. So this is a voila. This is an entire yeah. warehouse, literally. Yeah. This is where we will publish our computers. This is where I could, I could have. The funny thing, we don't actually don't have electricity here. So mm -hmm. we use generators and solar. So these computers that are lying here, are they waiting to be refurbished? Oh, they are. Yeah. Ready to or they are ready to be used? Yeah, yeah. So we have been installing, like, uh, again, we're just coming back. Uh -huh. the holidays, so we're I can see some books too. Yeah. I can see some motorbikes. This is for the transport for the school yeah, workers yeah, yeah. or something? Sometimes our teachers like, have to ride the motorbikes to school because like, the schools are very interior. Oh, I see your branding <laughs> right here. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Right, I'm going to tidy up more lighting. Is the lighting enough for you guys? Do you need more lighting? Should you do that? Let me see what I can do. Just drop off the curtains. Let me be the one locking the door this time. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what, right is, what is this in here? So this one is where oh, we do. This is where. This one we do most of our training. Yeah. So I can see some benches from the yeah, window. Yeah. 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 So normally we bring the computers here and do training. Great. And then this is what we're gonna convert it to, to your computer lab. So we used to have it downstairs. So we're gonna bring it up. So that's why we needed to have this. They needed to be higher. Yeah. Because before they were here. Oh, I see. And these kids, you know, they'll jump. <laughs> Yeah. They are curious, they are growing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we don't want to like, have any accidents, so we, that's what we are doing right now. This one goes all, this goes all the way up here. We can go to the top if you want to see it. Is the top occupied having any activity yet? Not yet, but it's actually a nice view. Mm -hmm. We get back down to witness a typical class in session with her sister Sharon Chiboy teaching. We walk in unfortunately to disrupt the learning and we are welcome regardless. These are yet to begin serious learning. They are only turning up to familiarize themselves with the school environment, she says. But what are those huge bags hanging on the wall? Don't they carry books? She laughs at me and I immediately fill in the gaps. And this one is number? This one is number? 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 Judging by the numbers, the admission has performed pretty well. Perhaps it says a lot about the confidence the community is gradually gaining towards Nelly's project. So we sniff Madam Sharon out for a brief conversation and alas, the rest of the team tags along. Where were Uli Uli Some Anini? E C D. Now before before Nelly, Nelly told me you did all the work up from being the teacher to being the cook to being tell me how was that from the beginning? We 
tukapanga kwa darasa nikatafuta meza moja sasa nilikuwa nikikuja asubuhi na nisho niingia kitchen baada darasa moja nakuwa kitchen nipike uji nipike lunch kila kitu nikienrolling watoto kwa kwa ofisi nikiingia darasa sawa sawa wenda kafundisha watoto acha si tutembee tuone Nelly recalls having Sharon as her main support during the project. We want when our kids graduate high school to be able to work remotely for companies all over the world. So I grew up in, in Mogotio, I went to Mogotio Primary. In Mogotio Primary I really struggled. I grew up in poverty, like going to bed hungry, like going to school barefoot, that was my story, right? We didn't even have kerosene. So I used to go and study at a hospital veranda, you know, using the electricity until like late at night, which was not safe for a girl. Right. But for me, I think what I really, I, I saw poverty for what it was. I think like, there's, yes, there's this the lack of basic needs, but for me, the hardest thing about poverty is the lack of upward mobility. It's the hopelessness. It's showing up every day, hustling, doing all you could just to have enough food so you can hustle tomorrow. Right. How, how do people, like, I don't understand how when you live like that, and I see that, when you live like that, how do you have the energy to keep doing that? And that is like what I, what I keep thinking about, that's what I keep seeing. And so, so for me, like it was, first of all, it was like, it was manifested through my mom because I saw it in her, and now I see it all over this, like my community. And so I was constantly thinking, what can I do? And so for me, it was like, I can work hard in school. Okay, I don't have kerosene. Okay, I'm gonna start at a veranda, right? And then I was like, I finished primary school, I was a top girl in Kweba Tech District. Oh, I went to a national school, Mary Hill Girls. And there, I struggled with tuition. We didn't, my mom was a Rakibanda, Kwana Pika Mandazi, like we didn't have money. So I was constantly sent home. And, and yeah, and so on the road, like Kwa Matatu, Kwa Kibanda, like when I'm selling, I'm catching up on my notes because I was so far behind on my school, I'm catching up on the road. Like, because that's like, for me it was like, okay, yes, I cannot be in school, like I'm, I'm, I'm falling behind and missing classes, but I can still do something. You're trying to make use of the available time. Yeah, right. And I got an A. I got an A Aww. with the two points out of that. Um, Cheers to that. I mean, <laughs> how we toss it out a drink. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. It was so cool. Like, it was crazy. I did. I, like, I, I think I replayed that moment when I found out that I got an A. Like, it was like, it, it was so, because I don't even have my clearing certificate, for example. I don't have my living certificate because I still owe money to the, like that like that is how much like I, I don't even have my high school papers so and then Until now as you speak <laughs> I need to go get them <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but like for a while like when I was when I was graduating and I was like we didn't have I not clear tuition I was still owed a lot of money to the school so I couldn't get my papers and those days they used to retain yes. the documents yeah, yeah I remember that, that's yeah that's what they used to retain it yeah so and then when I got an A like the whole like the, the whole of Mogot you heard about it. So then I was also like all their marketing. Because like what I've come to learn and what I've, I think I've learned along the way is that simply because you deserve it or simply because it doesn't mean that you're gonna get it. Doesn't mean like simply because you need a job doesn't mean someone is gonna give you a job. And no one cares. Yeah yes. simply yeah no one cares. So through the word Africa that's why I got the scholarship to go to America, yeah. And when I got there uh, I had work to do. I had responsibilities. My family was still living in like a shack. I'm looking at you getting an A. Did you know what you wanted to be? Did you know what you wanted to study, for instance? Yeah, I, since I was in class, I wanted to be a pilot. Right. And, and I just like, and the kind of person I am, I, I take a dream and I'm so driven and I just, like even at like class four, class five, I kept asking for pilots. Like I was looking for a mentor, someone who can show me what being a pilot is like. And I actually went as far as finding someone who knew someone was in the army. And in the army, they have aviation and they may know a pilot. Like mm -hmm. that's how far I went. Mm -hmm. And I kept calling that guy, hey, do you know the guy who may know a pilot? Stuff like that. And so when I was, when, and this is important because when I flew for the first time to America, I was like, yeah, not that, I don't want to be a pilot. And like the experience of flying. So, <laughs> but. How was it? I, it was just too long. It was just like. It was like an 18 hour something flight. Yeah, I don't know. It you're was like eight and eight and then. Yeah, like the break in between. The yeah. food and then it's just like, you know, you're like in a cube. And then a cube like a cone. It was just, for me, it wasn't, I realized it's not what I wanted to do. And it was extremely sad because I kept thinking about how I was looking for a mentor all my life and getting an experience of what it was like to be a pilot, I just did not. So I, I kept thinking about how disadvantaged we are 
especially when you're growing up in places like rural Africa, how you don't know much, right? You don't know anything, yeah. Like, when I got to America and I could work, so as a student, you can get a job. Yes. I, I didn't know, they were not like, most of the jobs were gone because I came to America, like I came to school late. And so I got a job as a janitor cleaning bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And I wake up at 6 a.m. until noon. We should go ashore. I, I, I already know how to clean toilets now. Mm -hmm. But because like, and, and I, I did that work, like on Saturdays and Sundays when, when my, you know, my college mates were having fun, sleeping in, they went the night before. I had to go to bed early because I had an early, right, early morning to go clean bathrooms, right? And so, and that money, the old money that I got, I took that money, I came to Gikomba, and I bought furniture and everything, and I moved my family out of, we grew up in a shack, like in a house that was like, like yeah. a slum, right? Yeah. Moved them into an apartment. And then I came up with an idea to build a school, right? We came with an idea to build a school. I did at, not at that time, was your family in uh, still in Mogotio? They, they are all in Mogotio still. Oh, yeah. We never left. We're all in yeah. Mogotio. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and then I came up with an idea to build a school, and, and immediately my, my sister Chuba is like getting land and scouting and working with, with construction. My sister Memo is oh, teaching in another hey, school. Chumba. Yeah. <laughs> Those Memo, are hard working yeah, ladies. Memo yeah. is like Memo is like teaching in a school, and so when we, so for me, I'm I'm thinking about like I, I just want to raise money to like build very tiny. It, the room it's like a rental, like mm -hmm. like a like a bed sitter kind. It was more yeah. like a rental. Yeah. Four rooms. I'm working in America to save that money. I'm sending home. Chumba is like over there fighting with Mafundis, like really like doing the investment and making it work. Yeah. And then and then at the end of 2015, the school is built very tiny. I have no money. Memoi comes in, and I took my mama when she back, and I zipanga, right? And I and I and I paint the wall with a blackboard because we can't even like do the yeah, basic blackboard, yeah, yeah. right? So I zipanga my mama way, I make a maguna to work at Chini. I'm just working with my my neighbors to come to Wanafunzi to start the school. I'm a little cook. Alikuwa, alikuwa nanini, uh, alikuwa cook, alikuwa daycare, alikuwa mwalimu, alikuwa kila kitu, right? And and, and even like buying the food, she didn't have, we didn't have any money to touch the school. But that's just how resourceful she was. Like yeah. how the, like the three of us. My that other is, one that is, is just a beautiful like, story. That's what I'm saying. Like that, yeah. that's, that's the thing is like, like coming from, like, like for us it's like we are our mother's daughters. Like we are a testament of the woman that raised us. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's amazing what women can do, actually. And I've heard you've been with your mother all over the world. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know how she feels, yeah. but she, might be, she must be very proud of you. We see you talk about your mom a lot. Mm -hmm. I believe there, there must be, you know, somebody that you once called or somebody you call a dad. Tell me about you and a father figure. I didn't have one, no. I didn't. It was just my mom and, uh, and the four of us. It was just us. Like, we were nobodies in the society. Wasana wa Christina. So they used to call us. Nine <laughs> Gafungua hivi kagali ya chini ay 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 gafungua suri ya wareba kubali gifu funguliwe aya na hii akatar ni kama ni ni shot katar ni shot kushinda yuko so abu ni kati ni kupaka na sema mungu wangu tutafika kweli watu ni shuka na kambi ya baba asante ulikula breakfast lunch hey 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 anda anda hey ita na kijenta jaribu rudu kwa araka ni kushiba ata kama sielewe mina kwa jamu nisa ngoto na galia na biayi Indo kwa nafanya kasi. Eh. Mm. Leta ile. Juice. Mm. Lekin na chuana sema kwa sauti ile sijui. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Where, where did you get the resources to do a four story, you know, school? Maybe. That is a really good that's a really good question. I love that question. Okay. So, I am a software engineer. Yes. Yes, I, software engineer. Yes, <laughs> I worked remotely from Mogotio for a company in America and I was getting paid a million a month. <gasps> <laughs> oh, give me a hug. Oh. oh my gosh. Congratulations. But no, no, but that's not the, that's the, the point of the story yeah. is that these jobs are there. That is the point of the story. The jobs are there. That even from Mogotio, you can do these jobs. And that is what we're teaching you our kids. You can have a change everywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. That basically. is what we're teaching our kids. Like right now, it's a really big deal because one of our teachers is working for a company in California from Mogotio. 
right? And some of our other teachers right now are doing data labeling, like machine annotation. Like it's it's like machine labeling where you are labeling. Like if you have a self-driving car, mm -hmm. you want them to like be able to identify like a goat. Hey, you know, you know, you know, like something yes, like that, yeah. right? So like you have to train so the like machine. So like it has so, a sensor. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, so you have to train the machine to like see when they see enough goats. Next time when they see a goat, they'll be able to machine will be able to like recognize that's a goat, right? So it's called like data labeling and annotation. So some of our teachers are actually working in in Nakuru. At a, so we have a like a partner of ours called Lish AI that employs 300 people, and some of them are working for Tesla. This, the car they are working for Tesla from Nakuru, right? The highest someone has made from that is 50,000 Kenya shillings a week, and this is from Nakuru. This just talks wow. about the opportunities that they're there. And that's, that, that's what we're doing with Techler Africa is that we are finding ways to embed these digital skills. Because it's not in, it, like, yes, CBC has the, like, there's a, lot of lack, there's a lot of lack of resources in terms of teaching digital skills in, yeah. in schools. And that's what we are, we are doing is that we are bringing these computers, we are going into schools, we are in schools every day. The kids are learning how to like build websites as part of their day to day. Like right now, our, our fifth grade of ours has a website hosted online. If you go to bowen.techlandafrica.org, you'll see his website. And so that kid has that, he knows how to send an email, you know, he has a TikTok, if you, see, you can see him on TikTok describing his website. That kid is ready for the workforce, he just needs to turn 18. And that's what we are doing, like that is, and that is how you sustainably that fix poverty. Beautiful. That's what we're trying. Yeah, that's what we're doing with Techland. Yeah, we have an opportunity here to get all our kids and all these people having all these skills and and actually just work for these companies all over the world without leaving, without leaving the community remotely. Remotely, these jobs are there. There's so someone reached out to me and they said, "Hey, I wanna build. Um, I like what Techland Africa is doing. I, I, I admire. Like, I wanna I wanna bring a, a customer support." I want to ask a customer support in Mogotia, uh, 100 seats, that's, that's 100 people who could be working from there. And I told them, I don't know if I can find 100 people in Mogotia who can do this job, right? So the, the gap here is the skills, it's yeah. not the jobs, the jobs are there. So we're working with 15 schools right now. We want to be in 100. We have the computers, we have fundraised long and hard to get the computers into Kenya. Yeah. We just need the schools to say yes. We'll, we'll contribute that. That's all they need to do. And then we are going to be like working on a hiring, hiring their people, hiring their youth. That money is staying in the community, hiring their youth, paying for the border, border, paying for repair. That money is staying in the community. But that is the biggest challenging thing is that they keep thinking like th this handout mentality is like, ah, what are you in a business? <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge that I have. Like, that's all I spend most of my time with convincing the schools that this is actually very sustainable. Our tour of this project is not complete without this main character, Maurice Kibowen, commonly referred to as Bowen. I think I've seen you somewhere. Celeb. I've seen you somewhere, <laughs> Bowen. Are you the one who was with a computer somewhere? Yes. Ha, that is you. <laughs> High five, man. <laughs> I'm quite eager to meet him after everything Nelly and I shared back in Nairobi and through his videos online. How did you learn how to do our website? And is computer something you like using? Yes. Do you like using the computer? Yes. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a software engineer. You want to be a software engineer? You know what those people do? They bite people's ears like this. <laughs> so that's what you want to do? <laughs> do you know what they do? Yes. What do they do? We are pretty much done here in Mogotio, and as the sun sets, we hit the road once again to head back to the capital, Nairobi. I hope you got some inspiration from today's story. Thank you so much for watching Globe Traction, and hope we can catch up again next week, same time, same place. Remember, if you have a story you'd like to share with us, please write to us through globetraction at standardmedia.co.ke or DM us on our social media platform at KTN News KE or at Globe Traction. You can also give me a follow on my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at Pansil Teleo for more of behind the scenes. 
But until then, I hope to catch up with you again soon. Bye-bye for now.